Welcome to a regularly scheduled meeting of the City of Hartford Common Council. All proper notices were sent. I'd like to call this meeting to order and ask if you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Roll call, Shannon. The mayor and all alder persons are present except alder person Webb, alder person Turchi, and alder person Savage, who are all absent and excused. Thank you very much. We have before us a unanimous consent agenda. President Rosniak. Move for approval. And uh, uh, alder person Kohler. Motion by alder person Rosniak, seconded by alder person Kohler, approving the Common Council minutes of June 11th, 2024. Thank you. Any comments, questions, concerns, additions, subtractions? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those no. Motion carried. Uh, communication, Shanna. So we have the discussion and consideration of approving a transient merchant license for Aptive Environmental LLC. Michaela, a representative of their company, is going to be appearing via Zoom. Thank you very much. Okay. And we have one other notice there. Oh, oh, we have her first. Hello, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are you? Okay. Oh, nice to meet you, everyone. I'm Mikaela from Aptiv. Okay, can we turn that up just a little bit, Jack? Please. Okay, go ahead, please. And and you will be doing your your transient merchant license. What will you be doing here in the city of Hartford? Uh, okay, so uh, after environmental, we all uh, we are uh, uh, pest control services. Uh, so we supply the pest control services for a few uh, insects. Uh, and what we do is we sell it to doors, like knocking on doors. Um, of course, we respect uh, the non-solicited signs because we always know that there are some residents that they don't like to, uh, well, that people knock their doors. Yeah. So, yeah, what we do, what we do is basically uh, offer our services, the pest control services. Uh, we have our team, all of them, they got, they have their ID, like their badges, a uh, thing like, the, like this, mm -hmm. with their identifications. They, are, they also use uniforms, like old uniforms, uh, where, where you can see active uh, in everywhere. Uh, and a few of them, um, they go uh, through the uh, houses, like in Segways, those like scooters, electrical scooters. Uh, so yeah, that's what we do. We are pest control services, and we we would like to again uh, work with you because last year I remember um, we also applied for our permits, our permits. So sorry, uh, and we got approved. So once again, we want to work with you. Uh, of course, if we get our licenses approved. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Anna. So we will have all of those licenses ready for you um, tomorrow after noon. So you can have those representatives in town come in and pick them up. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we will do that for sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. No, thank you and have a great noon. Hope uh, you had like a good uh, meeting. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet, nice to meet you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye now. And then the next item. So, you yeah, it's just a reminder that as of now, we still have the council photograph scheduled for July 9th, so the next meeting. So if you, if anybody knows that they're going to be gone, let us know, and we'll re try to reschedule a different date. Otherwise, dress in business attire, please. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Next, we have appearances and citizen comments. Anybody uh, from the city of Hartford wishing to address the council, you are more than welcome to come up, state your name and address, and you get three glorious minutes. Second request, third request. Okay, we'll go on to the mayor's report to keep things moving at a brisk pace. I don't have anything that's actually standing out in front of me, so we'll move right to aldermanic requests, uh, and that is President Resniak. Nothing tonight, sir. Okay, Alderperson Regan. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Uh, nothing tonight. Boy, we're, this is gonna go real quick. Tonight, nothing, tonight. nothing tonight, sir. Thank you, nothing tonight. Oh my goodness, well, we, we, we got a trifecta here. Super, thank you very much. Uh, next, we'll have a public hearing. This is for uh, the bid special assessment. I'd like to call this uh, hearing open and ask for a reading of the notice. Please take notice that the Common Council of the City of Hartford, Washington, Dodge Counties, Wisconsin will hold a public hearing at 7 p.m. or thereafter on Tuesday, June 25th, 2024, 
in the Common Council Chambers of Hartford City Hall, 109 North Main Street, for the purpose of levying special assessments under Section 66.0703 and 66.1109 Wisconsin statutes, to finance expenditures for the Business Improvement District, the 2024 bid operating plan and budget, as well as a map of the boundaries of the district are on file in the city clerk's office on the second floor of City Hall and may be inspected Monday through Friday between the hours of 7.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. The proposed assessments at $3 for every $1,000 assessed value of improvements were distributed in a mailing to affected property owners the purpose of said public hearing is to hear those persons who wish to comment for or against the special assessments to finance expenditures for the Business Improvement District. Thank you very much. Uh, explanation of hearing by staff. Are you taking this, Steve? Yep. Thank so you. again, this is an annual event that we take care of. Again, under the laws that the state of Wisconsin has regarding the formation of bids, a geographic area in a business district in which they prefer to have a special tax, an additional tax, and voluntarily assess the special tax against themselves to again put money towards improvements of that specific area. So our downtown district, district business, or business district, um, again on an annual basis, will bring forward um, their plan for the future, for the next year. So the action tonight would be to uh, approve a final resolution to loving that special tax, uh, voluntary tax against the members of the bid. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll have appearances for anybody wishing to appear for uh, the bid special assessments. Anybody appearing for? Anybody appearing for? Hearing none, we will go to appearances against. Anybody wishing to appear against the uh, Business Improvement District for the City of Hartford special assessments? Anybody against? Anybody against? <laughs> Hearing none, discussion by council. This is something I think we've all gone through a number of times. Just mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that you all had your ability to speak. Change it on the receiving end of this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. That's good. Uh -huh. I like that. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Well, uh, hearing no discussion, we'll close the hearing and ask for immediate consideration of resolution 3680, a final resolution for the levying and collecting of business improvement district special assessments. Uh, oh, uh, we'll, we'll go with uh, you. Mr. Curley. <laughs> <laughs> Dean yeah, Dean Curley, he threw me when he, when he tossed over the, it's funny being on this side. Uh, Alderperson Curley, second by Alderperson Garza. Motion by Alderperson Curley, seconded by Alderperson Garza for the adoption of proposed resolution number 3680. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Secondly, we have a public hearing to amend Chapter 13 Zoning Code to add language to create the permitted principal use of small-scale alcoholic beverage production. I'd like to open the hearing and ask for a reading of the public notice. Please take notice that pursuant to Section 62.23, Subsection 7 of the Wisconsin State Statutes and Section 13.1200, of the City of Hartford Municipal Code, a public hearing will be held at 7 p.m. or thereafter on June 25, 2024 in the Common Council Chambers at the lower level of City Hall, 109 North Main Street by the City of Hartford Common Council to consider the following. An ordinance to amend the following sections of Chapter 13, Hartford Municipal Zoning Code. Amend Section 13.0317, Subsection A, through the creation of Sections 13.0317, subsection A, subsection 1, and section 13.0317, subsection A, subsection 2, which will add language to create the permitted principal use of small-scale alcoholic beverage production, amend section 13.1602 through the addition of language defining small-scale alcoholic beverage production, the purpose of the public hearing is to hear those persons who wish to express their opinions for or against the requested zoning code amendment. In accordance with section 66.035 Wisconsin statutes, a copy of the proposed ordinance can be viewed at the Planning and Zoning Department, 109 North Main Street, Monday through Friday between the hours of 7.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Phone 262-673-8272. 
And this was published in the Daily News on June 7th, 2024 and June 14th, 2024. Thank you. And handling this for the city, I'm assuming, will be, seeing he is now seated up front, city planner Jacob Moss. That is correct. Thank you, Mayor. You bet. Uh, so, as many of you are aware, we're currently rewriting our zoning code. However, there's a certain business pers perspective business in the downtown that might uh, need this amendment to our zoning code prior to the adoption of the entirely new zoning code. Uh, the new zoning code will have similar language to this. Uh, and it's been reviewed by the plan commission prior to this. It's just we haven't adopted that. But to facilitate the possible new business in our downtown, uh, we are looking to create this small alcohol beverage production uh, land use in the downtown, uh, just in the B3 zoning district. Again, it's very limited to like microbreweries, so 3,000 barrels. It's not a huge production. Uh, there's not micro distilleries, so we don't have to worry about the distillation process, which can be kind of dangerous. Again, it's just to facilitate a business that that is within our downtown, and uh, we're just looking to uh, have the public hearing, and then this will go back to plan commission, and then it'll come back to the next uh, common council for vote as, as the ordinance. Thank you. Any questions, comments, concerns as to uh, what we're voting on then? Everything, everybody clear? This is just beer, right? I'm sorry, yeah, it's just beer. beer, correct. Well, proposing beer, but there is wine in here as well. Uh, okay. So, yeah. I move to approve. I second. Oh, we can't. Uh, well, let me finish the discussion. <laughs> Boy, I can tell who wants beer around here. Steve didn't raise his hand. <laughs> what thirsty talking about? Yeah. Any, did you have anything else, Tony? Dennis? I had, no. No? Okay. No. Uh, so it's Joe and Joe, Kohler Fulop. Uh, Motion by Alderperson Kohler, seconded by Alderperson Fulop, that the Common Council should forward citizen and Common Council comments to the July 8th, 2024 Plan Commission for the commission's recommendation and action. That's wonderful, but we because this is a public hearing, uh, uh, we had such an incredible rush, we do have to, Close for our up. vast studio audience, we do have to ask for any appearances for, <laughs> any appearances for, <laughs> any appearances for, seeing none, any appearances against, any appearances against, any appearances against, and uh, we've had a discussion, it looks we like, did. and uh, so I've closed the hearing. <laughs> And now we go with Joe and Joe, and you can read the uh, thing again, if you would, please. Motion by Alderperson Kohler, seconded by Alderperson Fulop, that the Common Council shall forward citizen and Common Council comments to the July 8th, 2024 Plan Commission Sorry. for the Commission's recommendation and action. No okay, with that, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those no. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Standing Committee reports, finance, and personnel. President Resniak. Two items for consideration. Number one, discussion and consideration of approving Class A, Class B, and Class C fermented and malt beverage and intoxicating liquor licenses for the period July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. Shanna? So this is just the yearly renewal of all the Class A, Class B, and Class C fermented malt beverage and intoxicating liquor licenses. Everything is the same except we did have two new ones, Board and Brush along with Garibaldi Mexican Bar and Grill, and we did have one change. Pearl of Canton requested a beer and wine license as opposed to an intoxicating liquor license. Wonderful, thank you. Any questions or comments for Shannon? Mm -hmm. Back to you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, for passage, uh, Alderperson Garza, second by Alderperson Fulop. Motion by Alderperson Garza, seconded by Alderperson Fulop, approving Class A, Class B, and Class C fermented malt beverage and intoxicating liquor licenses for the period of July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. President Resnick. Item two, discussion and consideration of approving cigarette and tobacco and weights and measures license for the period of July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. Shannon? So this is also a yearly renewal of all the cigarette and tobacco um, and weights and measures licenses. Everything's the same except there was one new weights and measures license and that was for extra sweet corn. Any questions, comments? If not, back to you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Okay, to move forward on the cigarette tobacco weights and measures licenses, we have 
That guy over there. I am. <laughs> <laughs> curly. <laughs> all the person curly, second by older person Kohler. Motion by older person curly, seconded by older person Kohler, approving cigarette and tobacco and weights and measures licenses for the period of July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. We don't have anything in public works or utilities. We'll go right to ordinances. This is the first reading and possible action. Ordinance number 1488, an ordinance amending section 340-0186 of the Hartford Municipal Code relating to all terrain vehicles. And we have our police chief here to take this part. So, uh, Chief McFarland. Thank you, Mayor. I was just looking. Thank you, Mayor. I was just looking for the map that I had put in a folder on this hard drive and I don't see it. So I don't know exactly what to show you, but uh, let me just present then. Just use your verbal skills. <laughs> uh, in this particular instance, uh, section one, subsection two of the ordinance was amended uh, for the routes. Since this ordinance was enacted, I think we've had it around two or two years maybe, a little over. Uh, allowing travel on selected roads and connector routes, there have been no issues or complaints reported to the police department. We haven't had people complain to us about uh, people in their neighborhood. Uh, in addition to that, other municipalities and counties in the area also have roads that are open to ATV, UTV traffic as well. I've reached out to several of those jurisdictions inquiring about issues they may have had and they reported none. The most recent uh, was Washington County who just opened theirs, I think at the end of last year after opening selected roads for uh, a year. Uh, staff has since received numerous inquiries from individuals and enthusiasts as to whether we will be opening additional roadways for ATV, UTV routes so they can patronize local businesses. While the economic impact is unknown at this time, uh, gas stations, restaurants, bars, and other local retail will benefit from individuals visiting Hartford while operating their UTVs either individually or in groups. In addition to that, R&D Sales, uh, power, the outdoor power sports company here in Hartford on uh, East Sumner Street. If you see, they've got snowmobiles and UTVs parked out in front of their establishment. I would also benefit from this change in ordinance. And again, I would show you the map. I even put it in a folder called map, and for whatever <laughs> reason, I do not see it. Uh, but essentially, uh, you'd be able to travel within the city of Hartford with the exception of any road on a state road, that'd be a numbered road like Highway 60 or Highway 83, that's anything over 35 miles an hour. Uh, currently, Hartford is a bit of an island. Around us, there are many jurisdictions that have enacted ordinances opening up their roads for uh, routes for UTV, ATV use. Uh, and again, uh, we haven't uh, experienced any complaints here for the routes and connector routes that we have currently. Uh, so staff would recommend the adoption of the change to the ordinance amending that section 340-0186 of the Hartford Municipal Code relating to all-terrain vehicle routes. And they are required to follow all the laws as far as speed limits, directionals, uh, complete stops at a stop sign, all of that. Correct. Right. And, and as I mentioned before, this change in ordinance really only is affecting subsection 2. Uh, and there was a couple provisions added to that section that allows the Common Council and the Chief of Police to close streets if necessary and then have resolutions to close permanently and or temporarily. Uh, so a lot of the rules uh, that they have to follow are contained in here and in um, the DNR uh, laws. Thank you. Alderperson Curley. This does not apply to golf carts. It correct? does not. Do you anticipate in the future that golf carts will be allowed? Well, ATV and UTVs are addressed specifically in state ordinance or state law, so I don't know. Uh, I guess I'd have to look up and see if golf carts are addressed as well. Uh, this, yeah, a golf cart is not normally licensed by the state of Wisconsin. It's to drive on a city street, private streets, yep. So you could go into an area like uh, Hartford Square 1, Hartford Square 2, That's with private, private roads. Yeah, sure. um, but again, that would be, have to be something that would be approved you know, but again, as far as city streets goes, no. I'm just thinking about a situation where they're coming out of Hartford Square 1 or 2, and they want to cross over uh, 60 to get to either the Walgreens or... No. And no. We wouldn't be able to do that, no. 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 <laughs> if you could hover it up over the highway... Yeah. 
<laughs> or an overpass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. an overpass. Just, yeah. I like it. Yeah, an overpass. Yeah. Question too. Okay. <laughs> oh, President Rosniak. So, Chief, if you got an ATV or UTV, you can go on any street in the city with the exception of Sumner Street and Main Street, 60 and 83? You could go on 60 and 83 as long as the speed limit is 35 miles an hour or less. You can. Okay. And so it's only at the outskirts of the city when the speed limit goes sure. up from 35. 45, right, you, right. There'd be a sign there that says you can no longer, this is no longer an ATV, UTV right. route. So the entire city, doesn't matter where, north, south, east, west, every street is open to a UTV or an ATV. Correct. And leaving the city, you would connect with town roads and county roads that are already open. Sure. Okay, I'll first with Philip. So on a, on a separate note, do, do we have anything that addresses electric scooters? I see a lot of those around the streets as well. And then, you know, segways aren't here yet. Obviously, we're not that urban, but... The, um, the individual that mentioned um, soliciting around the city was going to use scooters. Do we have anything on that as all, or it's not managed by the state, so it's not a... Yeah, there's some there's some stuff in ordinance. I'd have to look up to see what the specific language is, and I don't know if it's located under play vehicles or not, but there are some things about riding on sidewalks and whatnot with those particular vehicles. But they can ride on the street? I believe so, yes. Okay. It's okay. treated just like a bicycle. It, okay, that's where I was headed. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Nothing else, Mayor. I just I think I'm going to Thank up. you very much. Pick up my well, if you'd like to move forward with this, we would need to suspend the rules. Or we can go to a second reading. Go ahead. Uh, suspend the rules. Suspend the rules. I'll second. Fulop, second by Tony. Motion by Alderperson Fulop, seconded by Alderperson Garza, to suspend the rules for immediate consideration of proposed ordinance number 1488. For suspension, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those no. Motion carried. Now to move ahead with the uh, ordinance. Awesome. Okay, Alderperson Garza, second by Alderperson Regan. Motion by Alderperson Garza, seconded by Alderperson Regan for the adoption of proposed ordinance number 1488. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Uh, chief For the sake of conversation, what I'll have do, um, the chief can send it out to all of you in an email just in case somebody comes up to you and asks, where can I not ride my ATV, UTV? Sure. And we can send that, that map. I believe that's exactly what it shows is, is it where you can't drive. It's, and it's only, again, a handful of roads in there on Highway 60 on the east and west side of the city. We'll probably take that map as well and include it on our website and we'll give it to the county as well. Right. Well, the K, K South is 40 there, right? So that wouldn't apply. Correct. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, yeah, Highway 83 going south, a portion of that would not apply as well, yeah. Okay, before you leave, Chief, I just wanted to know if this would be an appropriate time to discuss or just straighten out uh, what I talked to you about dispatch and, and uh, the thing we had, and I asked if there would be something that you could mention as regards to uh, uh, how a dispatch call is handled uh, when, when somebody calls in. There was a little confusion at one time. I just wanted to make sure that all the council persons were aware of when our dispatch would be answering, if and when, and then when the uh, uh, county would answer direct and how, how specifically that works. I think you can answer that question to the mayor's report. So let's call this the mayor's report. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. I like this. So when you call dispatch right now, Monday through Friday, between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., you're going to receive one of our police support specialists. Uh, if for whatever reason they're tied up and they don't answer the phone, there's an auto attendant that's available and it'll give you a few options. I think that auto attendant's going to be changed soon to, to give you a few different options and updated. But one of those options is to get a sheriff's department dispatcher. On the weekends or after 6 uh, p.m. before 6 a.m., you would call that same number, the 2600 number, and it would give you those options and then you could press whatever the number is to press to get the sheriff's department's dispatcher. So if you need a police officer in Hartford, you're gonna be calling the sheriff's department's dispatch. You can either call them direct or you can call the 2600 number. You could talk to one of our police support specialists. They could then transfer you uh, directly to the sheriff's department's dispatch and you could get an officer's assistance that way. Um, sometimes you're gonna call uh, in the evening and we might not have the staffing to go all the way until six because something might happen. The auto attendant is still there. If you call, it'll pick up. You'll get to choose those options. It would be the same for the lobby phone. So if somebody comes into the lobby, pick up that phone, it's gonna uh, dial the sheriff's department 
Uh, it'll actually dial the 2600 number and you'll get those options to go to the Sheriff's Department as well. And the 2600 number, of course, is 262-673-2600. It is correct. Right. And right now the police support specialists, or what we call our front office staff, do not dispatch anymore. They don't call officers, they don't call them on the radio, they don't communicate with them other than in person or on the phone if they need to. So I guess keep that in mind. If somebody's looking for a police officer, they should contact uh, the Washington County Sheriff's Department dispatch. Which is or, uh, any type of emergency, anything, just dial? If it's an emergency, it's 911, of course, and, then, right. and you'll get them right away uh, on your cell phone or your landline because that's all been switched over. Uh, if you are dialing uh, direct uh, to their dispatch, I believe it's 335 4411, uh, or you can call the 2600 number and get that ability to transfer as well. So there's a few different ways. And like you just mentioned, now if somebody dials, you know, using their cell phone and they dial 911, it's all wired in, we're going to know where that person's calling from. Indeed, in, in fact, that's with landlines as well. So whether right. it's their well, cell phone or landlines, they're going to the sheriff's department, they will dispatch an officer. Uh, it doesn't take any more time than it did before. There's right. still somebody that's dispatching our staff right away, our road staff. Uh, and so it's, it's, a, it's a, a quick process. Yeah, the, the, I know the, line, the landline always pinpointed where the call was. There was some, you know, when we were going back and forth, this was some years ago, that this technology either wasn't there or was split between city and the county dispatch. That no longer uh, exists with that split. Therefore, you call 911, they're going to know where that cell phone is. Indeed. County dispatch uh, worked at implementing Next Generation 911, which is a far more accurate system of location. Yes. In terms of the, where the caller actually is. Okay. Primarily for cell phones, of course. Right. But they, could, they can locate landline as well. I mean, that's uh, easier. Just an off, off the wall question. Do you have an idea, or Steve, maybe you do, of, uh, of the people in the city of Hartford, how many people are going solely on cell phones now? Do we have a number like that? It would be a guess. Do you know how many of the, the calls actually come in from a cell phone? I, the last time I heard it was over 70%, but I don't know if it had grown from that or... Yeah, I would estimate, uh, and this is having watched it over the years, it, we went from uh, like a 70-30 situation, 70% uh, uh, sell to probably closer to 95%. Wow. Mm -hmm. The majority of the phone calls that come in are on a cell phone okay. or some kind of a VoIP phone. Super. Well, thank you for finishing up my mayor's report. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. Well, we've gone through the uh, thing. Uh, at next, we have our city administrator's report with Steve Oker. So uh, this is what we call our, our red uh, flag report. So every quarter we tell Thanks, you about Chief. how we're doing financially with the Fund 100, which is the general fund. Uh, again, this report shows there is no real big red flags. The city is at 23.8% for the total general fund revenues at the end of the current first year, uh, end of the first quarter. Um, this is a 1.2% lower than the average of the prior seven years, so not a huge difference. Uh, again, the largest area of lower revenues is general property taxes that we see. Uh, most of them are being uh, paid in the first, uh, third, fourth quarter, excuse me, of the prior year. Uh, total general fund expenses the current, uh, for the, this year's first quarter was 22.4%, almost exactly what the average is for the prior seven years. So again, that's what we call it the red flag. If, if something was way off, we'd know we had a red flag, something going on. Um, between the two numbers, we we're at 166,000 to the good, which is a reasonable start to the year. Uh, we've had years in which it was actually to the negative, but uh, we've rebounded in those years. So starting off very well, uh, a lot of changes, a lot of things going on that uh, uh, will address this. And, and again, each department head gets a, a, quarterly re, a quarterly report, even a monthly report for those who want it um, from the finance administrator. And we'll take a notice of any of the major changes that are above uh, or below that 25% for the first quarter. Any questions on that report? If not, Mayor? That's it? Wonderful. Well, that went pretty quick. Thank you very much for that report, Steve. Uh, at this time, I'd call for a motion to adjourn. We have Alderperson Phillips, second by Alderperson Curley. <laughs> motion by Alderperson Phillips, seconded by Alderperson yeah, really. Curley to adjourn at 7.29 p.m. <laughs> For adjournment, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. We stand adjourned. Thank you.